You know what the Bible says? The Bible said he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah means praise. I was praying this week and the Lord said, I roar where people praise me. I dare somebody right now, if you need him to roar in your life, If you need him to roar, you ought to just lift up a praise right now. He's about to roar in your family. He's about to roar over your finances. He's about to roar over your problem. He's about to roar and show the devil who's boss. Come on, somebody. He's a king and he's worthy. I said he's a king and he's worthy. I said he's a king and he's worthy. Hey, we bless your name, Jesus. Shit out of the bio. I want you to remain standing. I, I love you. I'm so glad to be here. I'm blown away. I'm humbled. I'm thankful to see this son and daughter in the Lord and all that they are doing. I just say praise the Lord. God must love you. He gave you a pastor and a pastor's wife and two pastors actually like this. Can we let them know how much we love them today on this Pastor's Appreciation Sunday? I, I can't say enough. Jeremy about how much you and Missy mean to me and how proud I am of you guys and how thankful I am for you and I believe I'm here on assignment today for you and for this house I, I believe God's going to say a thing are you ready church for what God wants to say today uh, y'all have already had my wife my girlfriend and my woman on the side here just a few weeks ago I, that's Pastor Dawn she came in here and preached the house down I heard uh, she, I, I, like I said, she's my wife, my girlfriend, and my woman on the side. She's like the Lord. She's all three rolled up into one. Can I get a witness? But I believe I'm here on assignment, and I feel this thing today. I feel the weight of what God has called me to bring today. I feel like I've stepped into something, and I feel like God wants to say a thing. Are you hungry to hear the word of the Lord today? I'm coming from Ezekiel 47. You can follow along on the screen or find it on your Bible. It said, in my vision, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right side of the altar on the south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around to the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing out through the south side of the east gateway, measuring as he went. He took me along the stream for 1,750 feet. Somebody say, that's the first dimension. Say it. Say, that's the first dimension. And then he led me across. The water was to my ankles. He measured off another 1,750 feet. Somebody say, that's the second dimension. And he led me across again. This time, the water was to my knees. Mm -hmm. After another 1,750 feet, somebody say, that's the third dimension. It was to my waist. Mm. Then he measured another 1,750 feet. Somebody say, that's the fourth dimension. And the river was too deep to walk across. In the fourth dimension, it was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. He asked me, have you been watching, son of man? Then he led me back to the riverbank. When I returned, I was surprised by the sight of so many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, this river flows east through the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of the stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. There will be swarms of living things wherever the water flows, wherever the water of this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea for its waters will, be, waters will become fresh. Life will flourish wherever this water flows. Fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea all the way from England to England. The shores will be covered with nets drying in the sun. Fish of every kind will fill the Dead Sea just as they fill the Mediterranean. But the marshes and the swamps will not be purified. They will be salty. Fruit trees of all kind will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of the trees will never turn brown and fall. And there will always be fruit on their branches. There will be a new crop every month. 
kingdom culture. There's going to be a new crop every month. For they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for food. The leaves will be for healing. He measured 1,750 feet. It was to the ankles, first dimension. 1,750 feet to the knees, second dimension. 1,750 feet to the waist, third dimension. And then in the fourth dimension, suddenly he was unable to measure it anymore. Suddenly it was a river that he could not pass over, a river to swim in. The fourth dimension is defined as a dimension beyond length, beyond breadth, beyond depth. It is a dimension outside of ordinary experience. It's a dimension that you cannot measure in natural terms. The Lord brought me here to deliver a prophetic word to this house. And I will let you announce it to people in your neighborhood. Look around you and say, hey, neighbor, welcome to the fourth dimension. I need somebody to praise him who's ready for the fourth dimension. No, 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 no. I need somebody to bless him. God said, I'm taking you to a place where you can't measure. I'm taking you to a place where you can't even measure what I'm doing. You've been able to measure it before, but God said, what I'm about to do now, eye has not seen and ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of a man what I have prepared for those who love me. Somebody's going to have a miracle in the fourth dimension. This house. Uh. You know, this season has, has really changed me. Where I've been with Jesus has changed me. And I feel a glory in here. You want to get in, in this same anointing I'm going to teach in today? Preach in. Will you slip up your hands, precious? Father, we love you today. Thank you for your word that's prophetic and powerful. I'm asking you today that we would never be the same again. Thank you for moving outside the range of ordinary experience. We give your name all the glory. Now come on and give the Lord the ovation of the day. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody shout unto God if you love him today. All right, before you sit down, precious, tell everybody in your neighborhood, welcome to the fourth dimension. I declare... In Jesus' mighty name, that there is a river. And here's what I feel in my spirit, kingdom culture. The river isn't coming. The river is here. And I want you to begin to think in different ways now. I don't want you to think in terms of levels. The Lord said it's no longer about levels. The Lord said, now you're moving in dimensions. When you move in a level, you can go from one level to the next level and access the level that you were in before. When you move in levels, you can look and see the level that you were at and have access to that level that you were just in. But God said, what I'm about to do in the lives of people in kingdom culture, what I'm about to do in this house is no longer going to be calculated by levels. You're going into dimensions. And the Lord said, when you get in a new dimension, you won't even be able to access the level that you were at. Everything's going to look different, sound different, be different. And the Lord said, get ready. I'm moving you beyond levels. I'm moving you into dimensions. I wonder if there's anybody here today that's ready to go into a brand new dimension. I said, are you ready to go into a dimension where you've never seen the things that you're going to see? God began to speak to me about this assignment to preach here. And transparently, when he brought me to this text, I, I preached it many times and I resisted bringing it here. I said, Lord, I, I really would, I, that, that, that can't be what you want me to preach. The very next morning, I got up before daylight to pray and I pulled up this text and read it in my time with the Lord. 
And that morning, uh, it came up on my social media out of nowhere, a memory. And that memory was a video that I had posted many, many years earlier. And it was the anniversary day that I was actually preaching on the river. And then uh, I get a call, and we're talking to Pastor Jeremy. And the intercessors here, they said, we keep seeing a river. God is showing us a river. My pastor from Indiana, our campus there, called us up and said, Apostle, we keep dreaming of rivers. We keep sensing rivers. Missy was reading, Pastor Missy was reading, and she said, I just sense that there's a river. And so I said, Lord, maybe, just maybe, you're trying to tell me something. Come on, somebody. I've never felt more prophetic. I've never felt more of an unction to preach what the Lord has given me because I've seen stuff in this river that I've never seen before. Now, there are some who want to say that this particular group of scriptures is just poetic, but, honey, they are not po just poetic. They are prophetic. That means that the river means something. We don't need to spiritualize the river. The river spiritualizes itself. Now, Ezekiel 47.1 says, In my vision, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing at the right side of the south side of the altar. Now, now remember, we have just moved in to 5784, and this is the new Jewish year. And 5784 is very significant because Bishop Wallace, my closest friend, was here just a few weeks ago, and he talked to you about doors. And I hear the Lord say that in this season, God is opening right doors, and he's closing wrong doors. He's going to open the doors that you need, and he's going to close the doors that you don't need. But I decree and declare that as the river flows in this house, that doors of healing are opening. Doors of joy, peace, provision, breakthrough, and revival. The Lord is going to do things that you never seen or dreamed or imagined. And when people come in here, they're going to find a door of hope, a door of direction, doors of restoration, and doors of household salvation. In all my years leading this family of churches, I've never seen more doors open. But I want to go a little bit deeper. When we look at 5784, I want us to quickly understand what each number means. Five is the chat. 5784, five is the chat, which means behold. Seven is the A in which means I, or to see, or to be a watchman. Eight means pay, it means mouth, and four means door. And what I see here is a sentence, and that sentence is simply this. Behold, see, and speak about the door that is open before you. You're going to see what God has for you to see, and you're going to speak about what God is showing you. This is not the time when the church is going to be silent. This is not a season of silence. This is not a time to be blind. But I declare that in kingdom culture, people are going to walk out of here, and they're going to declare every good thing. But we're also going to be watchmen on the wall. So what does that mean? That means not only are we going to see the things that are good that need to come through the door, we're going to see the things that are bad that we need to keep out of the house. I declare that we refuse to be quiet, cute, contained, or contaminated. In this house, we will see, and in this house, we will speak. We will not be quiet, cute, contained, or contaminated. In this house, we see and we speak. This is not the season where we will be quiet, where we will be easygoing. But we make an announcement to Orange County. We make an announcement to Claremont Winter Garden, Okoy. We make an announcement to Opopka that there is a river on Highway 50. There is a river in Winter Garden. Ha! Huh. Now, watch this. Yesterday, we know all that went down in Israel. And the Lord has been dealing with me about being a watchman on the wall. The Lord has been dealing with me about the fact that even though this is the year of the door, it's the year of the watchman. Because we're going to watch what's coming through the door. We're not going to let just anything come through the door. 
Healing can come through the door. Come on, somebody. Power can come through the door. Revival can come through the door. Household salvation can come through the door. But compromise can't come through the door. The agenda of the enemy can't come through the door. Come on, this, this, this gospel that compromises the word of God, it can't come through the door. And I hear the Lord say, I'm raising up watchmen on the wall. Now, here's what blew my mind. I was uh, watching the news, and my brother actually reached out. And what they said on the news was this invasion in Israel probably would not have happened had they had actual watchmen on the wall. The problem was they were depending on their technology. They were counting on their technology to scan the enemy instead of having watchmen on the walls. And the Lord spoke to me in that moment. He said the strategies and attacks of the enemy will not be thwarted by our technology, our screens, our sound system, our fine facilities, or our social media savvy. Satan's agenda will be thwarted, uh, thwarted against remnant houses of revival because seeing, speaking watchmen are on the wall. How many of you are glad that you have a, pa a pastor who is a watchman on the wall? I'm tired of cute compromising preachers. I'm tired of preachers who don't stand up and preach the word because they're scared of people. But I'm telling you, I'm 59 years old and I'm not scared of any of y'all. There needs to be a gospel again that sanctifies and separates and delivers and we must have watchmen on the wall. Whew. Now the Bible says that there was a man in this text and he measured as he went God always chooses a man when he wants to do something significant now the Lord dealt with me to do something I don't think I've ever done in my entire ministry of preparation through the years in the King James Version the Bible said he went a thousand cubics but in this text, it says in the New Living Translation, he went 1,750 feet again and again and again. And I felt the Holy Spirit lead me to check the Strong's original Hebrew, number 1,750. And when I checked it, I was blown away because Strong's number 1,750 is the Hebrew word dance. It actually means to dance, to spring, to jump and to leap. It is, it is linked to the scripture that he has turned my morning uh, into dancing. And the Lord brought me here to announce that the river is here. And everyone who will jump into this river of God's anointing and presence in Jesus' name, depression and anxiety will be washed away and sorrow will be turned to joy. I'm going to tell you that this house is going to be a house where anxiety is defeated. This house is a house where depression is defeated. This house is a house where the river flows and the bound and discouraged and depressed are going to be supernaturally set free because there is joy in the river. I said there is joy in the river. I said there is joy in the river. I said there is joy. I need somebody who is ready to see a generation set free from depression. Come on. God's about to do a thing. God's about to heal manic depression. God is about to drive out bipolar disorder. God is about to heal emotional issues in the river. When I returned, he said, I was surprised by the sight of so many trees. Verse 8, the river flows east through the desert, he said, and the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of this stream will make salty the Dead Sea. It'll heal the Dead Sea. There will be swarms of living things. Everything will live. Everything will live. Everything will live. Everything will live. 
not some things, not most things, not a few things. Everything will live wherever this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea, for its waters will become fresh. Life will flourish wherever this water of the river flows. Now, you better hear me in this room. The desert being spoken of here is the Araba Desert. The Araba Desert, if you define Araba, it means the desert of depression. It means the desert of anxiety. But I don't want to be redundant, but I want to be thorough. Hopelessness will be broken off of many. Here's what I hear the prophetic word of the Lord say. And depression will be healed because this is a house where the river of God is flowing. Suicide will run out of the building because the river is in the house. Now, now the sea referred to here, precious, it's a dead sea. And understand this, you don't get any sicker than dead. And, and the dead sea, the reason the dead sea is dead is because it has 37 tributaries 37 sources of fresh water that flow in, and nothing flows out. All the Dead Sea does is receive. And I've been there many, many times. And the Dead Sea is so salty that nothing can live in it. Anything that hits it dies. Have you ever known people that all they knew how to do was receive? All they knew how to do was take, 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 take. And because of that, everything that hit their lives died. Everything, that any good thing that came to them died. Any good relationship, any good job, it, they killed it all because all they did was take. And sadly, there are churches that rise up in communities and they only become taker churches. They only take from the communities and they only take from the families and they only take from the people. But let me tell you, that's the difference when you get a river and a reservoir. At a reservoir, when the water hits it, if it just stays there, eventually everything will die in the reservoir. But we are not in the business at Sea Life. We don't build reservoirs. We accommodate rivers this is the place where your family gets set free this is the place where cancer dries up this is the place where your broken marriage gets put back together because there is healing in this river I mean it'll get on your road right now I'm telling you healing will flow on your road right now a new season will flow on your road right now Joy will flow on your road right now. Peace will flow on your road right now. Because there's a river in this house. Somebody shout, there's a river here. Now, and it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, it will live. Watch this. Dead marriages are going to come back to life in the next season. Dead destinies are going to be rediscovered in this season. Now, now check this out. This is a house of healing because the river is here. But I saw something that I'd never seen in verse 9, actually verse 10. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from En Gedi and in England. They will be a place for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kind as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly, exceedingly what? Many. Now, I want to tell you, in this gospel net, you're going to find all kind of fish. You're going to find white fish and black fish and brown fish. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And yellow fish. You're going to find Baptist fish. And Methodist fish. And Pentecostal fish. Can I go a little deeper? 
when you get to heaven, there won't be a Baptist section. There won't be, a, there won't be an Assembly of God section. There, there won't be a Presbyterian section. Let me, let me mess you up. There won't be a black section. There won't be a white section. We're going to all be so glad to be there, we won't even care who our neighbors are. Come on. Their fish will be of the great sea exceedingly many. Now, now watch this. It's powerful to me because he said fishermen from Engedi will be there. Now, Engedi has two root words in it, A-N meaning I and Gedi meaning see or to see the goat. So in Gedi means to see the goat. In the Bible, the goats represent lost people, lovers of pleasure, uh, the imperfect people, struggling people, bound up people, jacked up people. And it says that those who fish in this river are going to see the goats. They're going to see the struggling. They're going to see the messed up. But what we like to do, hand me the reel. What we like to do is we like to, we like to fish with a reel and rod. We don't want to fish with a, with a net. Well, Apostle, just fish in the pond that I like. We, we, we're going to fish in the political pond. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They got to be just, I want to fish in the, I'm going to fish in the white pond. I'm fishing in a Hispanic pond. Y'all, where y'all at? I'm fishing in the African-American pond. Yeah, I want you to fish in the pond where the people are just like me. Fish in the just like me pond. But I'm telling you, you we can't. You say, why, Apostle? Because we already got our quota of big mouth bass. Come on, somebody. The reality is we don't fish with a rod. We fish with a net. And fishermen from Engedi, the Bible said they will see the goat. And they're fishing for the goat. I've come to let every homosexual know. I've come to let every transgender person know. I've come to let every addict know. I've come to let everybody bound in sin know. There is a church and we're in a garden, baby, and we're fishing for you. We're after you. I don't care how jacked up you are. I don't care how messed up you are. If you want to fish for the goats, open up your mouth and give God a praise right now. We're fishing for you. I said we're fishing for you. I don't care how messed up you are, we're fishing for you. I don't care what your past looks like, we're fishing for you. Now, watch this. Then he said that they fished. The fishermen were from England. Ing means A and I's, but glam means the cow. Eyes on the cow. Eyes on the bull. Now in the Bible, bulls, y'all, bulls and cows represent wealth. It represents the blessings of the Lord. And cows represent the provision of the Lord. And I was praying, and here's what I felt like the Lord said. The Lord said he's raising up some cows in the river. Blessings are in the river. Maybe you don't need to be blessed. Maybe you don't want to be blessed. But God is going to bless people in this hour who will bless his work. God is going to bless those who will bless his agenda. I'm not talking about name it and claim it or blab it and grab it. I'm talking about money on a mission. God said, I'm about to bless people who will get behind what I want to do in the earth and I will provide exceedingly, abundantly, far above all they can ask or think. I need somebody right now who's willing to be a cow in the next season. Open up your mouth and give God a praise.
Listen, I got about 40% of you that that want to be cows, but the rest of you, I don't know. If you are in a place where you say, God, if you bless me, I will bless your kingdom. I will bless your work. If you want to be a cow in the last days, open up your mouth and give God a praise. Pastor Jeremy, God is going to bring you cows. God is going to bless people in this congregation because you got buildings to buy, you got lands to acquire, you got campuses to start, and God said, when I can find people who will put me first, I'll bless those people. Now look down your row and holler at somebody and say, moo. Wait a minute. Look down your whole row and just say, moo. Now grab your neighbor and say, I'm just practicing. Yeah, yeah, I'm just practicing. Because I have made up in my mind that I believe he is Jehovah Jireh and he's going to supply through me everything for the kingdom. I will. Hey, God's going to raise up blessed folks. There's blessings in the river. Joy in the river, healing in the river, resources in the river. Anybody want to go deeper in the river? But here is a warning. It says, but the swamps and the marshes will not be healed. They will be given over to salt. To me, this is heartbreaking. Because swamps and marshes represent places where the river used to flow. But it don't flow anymore. It represents where the river used to be. But it's not there anymore. And let me tell you, in three months, I'm turning 60 years old. 60. How is that possible? But let me tell you something. Baby, I'm not coasting in. I'm not gliding in. I'm not going to finish this thing barely surviving. I'm not trying to get, well, if I could just get to my retirement, I'll chill, baby. That ain't what I'm going to do. In the name of Jesus, I'm staying in the river. Everything that I cover is going to be in the river. Everything that I lead is going to be in the river. I say I bind the swamp out of my life. I bind the marsh out of my life. I bind death out of my life. I bind it off of our ministries. I've watched many of my friends through the years. I've been doing this a long time now. And they started off strong. But now they pass the churches that are swamps. Not trying to be critical, just truthful. And marshes. The buildings that used to be full are so empty you can turn a semi-truck around in there now and not hit anybody. But I want you to raise your hands and I want you to make this declaration after me. Say, in Jesus' mighty name. Shout it out. Say, in Jesus' mighty name. The river of God will flow in this place and it will never stop flowing. And it will never stop flowing. And it will never stop flowing until Jesus comes again. Now, I need somebody who believes that to give God a praise. No, this is not a few-year thing. This is not a six-month thing. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that there is a river, and it's going to flow until Jesus returns. Now watch, along the bank of the river, on this side and that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. Watch, they will bear fruit every month. Raise up your hands. I declare you're going to bear fruit every month. I declare this campus is going to bear fruit every month. I declare everything you cover will bear fruit every month. That means you're going to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. If you're ready to bear fruit every month, just open up your mouth and give God praise for it right now. 
Come on, if you're ready for a perpetual harvest, give God some glory for it right now. It's a Now, their fruit will be for food, and their leaves will be for medicine. This river is going to cause you to be able to nourish this community, and everywhere you begin campuses. You know why the river is going to flow? It's, it's even going to flow outside of this building. You say, Apostle, I know the river's here, but how's it going to flow outside of this building? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Everywhere you go, you don't leave the river on, is this Colonial Boulevard? You don't leave it on Colonial Boulevard. You take it with you. Everywhere you go, baby, when you walk in, the river flows. I mean, when you get to work, I feel like preaching. <laughs> when you get to work and all hell is breaking loose, there is a river inside of you that cannot be contained. It is not contaminated. It can't be blocked. It can't be stopped. Everybody's going crazy, but you get a praise inside of you. That's when you need to say, excuse me a minute. Let me go to the bathroom and get yourself in the handicap stall because you're going to have to have a little bit of room and you say, Lord, I bless your name. Out of my belly, rivers are flowing. Joy is flowing out of me. Healing is flowing out of me. Peace is flowing out of me. Restoration. <laughs> Come on now. Give God a praise if you want the river to flow out of you. Watch. On this side and that, my watch just asked me if I'm okay. <laughs> Did you take a fall? Not yet. I may fall out in the Holy Ghost before it's all over, but not yet. Healing is in this river. Here's what I would declare is going to happen. Can I speak a little faith? Can, I said, can I speak a little faith? There's healing all in this house. I, I know some of y'all watched the revival recently that took place at Calvary over in Ormond. We had four people with stage four cancer healed. No, I wish y'all would shout like you believe it's true. We, we had a baby get brand new kidneys who was facing kidney surgery. I held that baby in my arms. He got brand new kidneys. The doc, when we took it to the doctor for the surgery, the doctor did the pre-op and said, I don't know how to tell you this, but these are not the same kidneys that I was looking at just two months ago. I don't even have time to tell you the miracles that are taking place. But here's what I say in faith. What's that hospital that's up there on 50? What's the name of that hospital? What is it? Orlando Health. That when the ambulance is riding to Orlando Health, they say, don't take me to the emergency room, but pull over in the kingdom culture. I heard that there is a river in that house. I heard that people are getting healed in that house. Before you take my blood, take me there. Before you give me medicine, get me there. There is a river of healing. I dare somebody right now who believes that there's a river with healing in it. Stop and give God a radical praise. <sighs> Can I go a little deeper? I said, who wants to go a little deeper? Watch this. It said that trees are going to grow on this side and that. And the reason they grow by the river is because the roots run to the water. Because they know I can survive even if it don't rain. If I can get my roots in the river. And I came to speak prophetically to somebody who's got some lost children. 
and they're not where they need to be with God. And their roots have run to the world, and their roots have run to compromise, and their roots have run to bondage. I hear the Lord say, get ready, get ready, get ready. There's a river in this house, and your lost children are about to find their roots, and they're going to... Your lost brothers and sisters are that the roots are going to find the river. Somebody give God a praise right now. Hallelujah. Now watch. My, my watch is really worried about me. It keeps asking me, am I all right? Watch. He measured 1,750 feet to the ankles. First dimension. You were in a house. You were in a house. Second dimension, see you to your knees. <laughs> you were in a school. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Right through COVID, you kept trusting him. You went to a theater. You didn't even know it, but you were in the third dimension. But I hear the Lord say. That you've left ankle deep. You've left knee deep. You left waist deep. And now you are in a river. And Webster's defines the fourth dimension as a dimension beyond the length, breadth, and depth, a dimension outside the range of ordinary experience. I hear the Lord say, You have moved from the measurable to the immeasurable. You have moved from the containable to the uncontainable. The Lord said you've even moved out of the natural and into the supernatural. The Lord said now you are in the fourth dimension. God said what I'm getting ready to do, you ain't even gonna be able to measure it. Yeah, you won't even be able to say how the cancer dried up, how the family got restored. I don't know how it happened. All I know is that I got in a river and that river changed me forever. If you're ready to be in the realm of no explanation, open up your mouth and give God praise. Here's what I came to declare. In fact, I'm going to have you declare it to your neighbor. Get your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, holler at them like you holler at your children and they get on your last nerve. Say, neighbor, you're leaving the measurable and God is taking you to the image immeasurable. Say this, say, welcome. Holler at them, say, welcome to the fourth. Welcome to the fourth dimension. Welcome to miracle signs and wonders. Welcome to where you can't even explain it. You can't even. I need somebody right now who will jump in the river. Jump in. Jump in right now. Jump into this prophetic word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel a breaking in the atmosphere. I said hallelujah. If somebody would jump up and praise the Lord, they know tell him what would happen. Now, God knew what he was doing. When he put your pastor, Pastor Jeremy and Pastor Missy, when he put them right here in Orange County. Because Orange County has had a lot of drama. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Y'all don't know, I used to live on Vineland Road. I played Little League Baseball here. I grew up here. I lived in Winter Garden. I went to Dillard Street. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. My daddy pastored a little church here on Vineland Road. And I never dreamed 
that I would have the honor of getting behind a young man that would come to a place where I grew up at and facilitate a river of God's anointing and power. But I need you to stop and thank God for who he put as your pastors and leaders. Come on, give God... No, if you're thankful for this leadership, I don't want to embarrass him, but when you don't appreciate someone, you depreciate them. If you're thankful for them, open up your mouth and give God a shout. Now, now what I love about Pastor Jeremy, you, you got some pastors who act like lifeguards. It don't take all that. You're getting too deep out there. Y'all, quit that hollering. You better come in here shallower water. That's not the leader you got. You don't have that cute little lifeguard leader that's scared of you getting in the river. You don't have a guy who's gonna sit in a chair and direct people in the river. No, you've got leaders that'll say, we're in the river, come get in with us. Let's go deeper. Healing is open. There's healing. There's deliverance. There's power. There's a, somebody give God praise on Pastor's Appreciation Sunday. Led me 1,750 feet. It was to the ankles. 1,750 feet to the knees. 1,750 feet to the waist. Fourth dimension. Then it was a river. I couldn't measure it. It was over my head. It was deep enough to swim in. What's happening now, Pastors Jeremy and Missy, is that you are being thrust into the fourth dimension. It's a dimension that you can't describe. It's a dimension where your church grows so Miracles happen, people come, and you can't even measure it. You've been hungry for this. And the Lord said that he is giving it to you because of your hunger. And the hunger that you have is breeding hunger in this house. Your desperation on display is facilitating the desperation in this house. Pastor Jeremy, you know you're a son to me, like for real. We talk several times a week. I want to, you're going to far outdo me. I declare it. And I will rejoice. I will rejoice. You and Missy are world shakers. Jeremy, Missy, welcome to the fourth dimension.
cows are coming. Jeremy, you know that I know about cows. You know that last year we had a $1.2 million gift. We've had a $9 million gift. Every time I've tried to build, I heard a moo. And somebody gave resources. I know that's too much for all y'all super spiritual people. But how many of you know that if God calls you to build it, moo, there's going to be some cows that'll show up. But Jeremy, all the buildings and all the facilities that's coming, that's going to be great. But God's going to bless you because you're a watchman on the wall. You and Missy are speaking truth. So today, son, you and Missy, I love you guys so much. You are precious to me beyond what I can describe. Your success gives me so much joy. I'm always in your corner. As long as I live, I will be lifting you up. I will be praying for you. I'll always be an ear and a voice in your life. I believe in you. I believe in your anointing. I believe in who you are. I believe in what you declare. I believe in your integrity. I believe in your heart. I believe in the river that flows through both of you. In Jesus' name, as great as even this Wednesday night was, you haven't seen anything 